Welcome to the Michael Arts' Show. I'm Michael Arts. You are the Terrifics. You make Be Terrific special. Thanks so much for joining us at Be Terrific TV on all social media. I'm really excited today. Really, really excited. We, we do a lot of fun stuff here at Be Terrific. We talk to a lot of great guests, but I've got a guest who has got some really, really cool products. He's an inventor, but it's beyond that. We kind of relate on a different level. You'll find out more in just a moment, but I want to introduce our guest today. HowWeInvent.com is a website. Howie Bush, thank you so much for joining us. You invent products, you create products, you're an entrepreneur, and in addition, you also help young entrepreneurs and young inventors kind of come up. That's true. Not necessarily young. I got some old clients yeah. also, but students, clients, I try and I try and help people, yeah, oh, learn, learn the process. Yes, 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 absolutely. All right. Uh, it, it's pretty cool. So here, things that you've put together, you have a lot of other things that are in the process that I've seen that are amazing that really, you know, aren't ready for us to bring on air. So we'll do that at another point. But uh, how did you get into inventing? I mean, you're a Long Island guy, you're in business, you're doing a lot of cool things. You, you had a company doing, uh, you know, uh, representation of celebrities, athletes, and on-air talent. Um, and you sold that company, and then you, you you did all sorts of stuff, right? And you were very involved in the World Series of Poker and building that brand, and then you became an inventor. And a little bit later in life, and I don't mean it like you're old, but you <laughs> didn't. Right, it, I am old. That's but okay. you didn't start at 20 yeah. being an inventor, as far as I know. Right, that's true. You know what? I've always had ideas. You know, my friends in college called me the idea man. I don't know if you remember uh, the movie Night Shift. Yeah, sure. Billy Blaze Jowski, Billy Blaze. I even named my company after it. He was an idea man. Remember, feed, sure. feed, uh, feed uh, mayonnaise to the tuna, uh, edible paper. He had all these crazy ideas. That was me. Yeah. I was that guy. But I never did anything about it. I didn't know what to do. Um, and then, like four, I guess it was like four or five years ago, I decided to start doing stuff about it. And uh, the first one. Don't tell me the first one yet. Hold yes, on, hold yes, on. Yes, yes. So I, I feel like I'm an idea guy too, right? I'm always like, oh, we could do this better by doing this, or maybe we need this product. Right. And I've probably come up with a lot of ideas, maybe 100 ideas. Never done anything with any of them. I've gotten marginally close to doing something on some of them. And I'll tell you a little bit about them later. You already kind of know, but I'll tell the, the terrifics. Um, but. My thing is, is that, uh, you know, I think that in reality, it's really hard to go from like, I have a hundred ideas to I have one idea that I'm going to run with to I'm actually producing that one idea. Yeah. You know what? You have to kind of pick one and go with it and, and kind of commit to the process. And it depends what you're doing. You know, there's a lot of ways to get to market. So there's, you know, creating a product and then going and trying to manufacture it yourself. Mm -hmm. and, and then you have to do everything. You have to do the sales, you have to do the manufacturing, the bringing it in, the warehousing, the inventory, all that stuff you have to do. So that's, that's one way, if you have an idea and a product, that's what a lot of people, that's what most people do. I didn't want to do that. And what I started to do was actually come up with the idea, get it to a point, and then license it to somebody who has that expertise. All right, I want to go into all this. Um, but just on the fact that you have an idea and you make a prototype, how do you, I mean, you, I mean, again, do you have to have a lot of money to do that? Do you have to have, uh, how do you do it? And how do you do it like at your point in life when you're on this trajectory uh, running businesses? You know, there's a lot of ways to do it. And a lot of it depends on the product. I mean, if I'm- But I mean you, how do you go from what being are, Howie, this business guy, to going, you know what? I'd like to make one of these products that I have an idea for, and I'm either going to license it or I'm going to... Well, the first yeah. one, the way All right, I came... So now we're I'll, well, I'll tell about, you the yeah. first one. The way I came yeah. to it was... Th so this is the first one. That's the first one. Yeah. And, and it looks... You don't know what it is until you know what it is. So, right. so a friend of mine and I decided we were going to do something together. Uh, I had been in the sports world, as you said, as, a, as an agent, NFL agent, and I had a marketing side to my company touching all the sports. Uh, my friend uh, was in the sports business as well, and he had relationships at all the teams. And we said, let's do something together. And we decided we were going to create a good luck product for your favorite sports team. And what fan doesn't want to bring their, their favorite team good luck? Right. So this was the first product we came up with. We called it, you know, they're a rabbit's feet, right? Yeah, this so is we a came rat up tail? With, it's not a rat tail. That's not good luck. But a fox tail is a good luck. A fox tail. So that we call these it. lucky tails. And these aren't made out of real fox tail. Correct. All no, right. uh, we had something on there. It says no, no, no fake foxes were injured in the making of these. I, I like so, it. So, but the whole point of it was you can put it on your backpack, you can put it in your room. 
and we gave them out in stadiums. We actually did a uh, something at Syracuse where we gave them out to 5,000 uh, fans. The Orange Men. And it's it's waving it around. So this and, is the terrible and towel. It, but, a, the, but the new idea on the terrible that's towel. That's what it was. Right. And what we did was we... Listen, we spent money to do it, and we started to venture it, like like do it on our own. But we said, let's license this because we don't have the licenses. We don't want to go out and start getting licenses. So this was the product we created. We made mistakes along the way. We paid too much for prototypes. We didn't need certain things in terms of trademarks that we got necessarily. Um, I've, I've learned a lot through my journey, through all my different products of how to do it. You asked, you know, what's the cost? And it certainly depends on the type of product. Well, like a product like this, you talk about you overpaid for a prototype. I would be willing to say that a prototype could cost as much for this as a five hundred dollars. Is that realistic, or is that that is realistic? I don't remember exactly what we yeah. paid for that one specifically, but it was. I didn't need to pay that much for that. Right. Frankly, I did. I, pro I I don't remember. It may have even been more because we got more than one. Sure. But it no, definitely I wasn't per possibly. It, yeah, but it wasn't exactly that, but something like that. It was right. close enough, and that's way more than you need to. I was new at it, but yeah. you know what? I believe also in action, and, and so you're going you're gonna to make mistakes along the way, but it's better than just trying to wait for perfect, because right. that's never going to happen. Right, right. So, all right, so you, you, you maybe you spent too much on this, but you get, you get a prototype, and then what do you do with it? You take it to the licensing company and say, hey... But do you, how do you protect it so that they don't say, oh, well, we can right. make that. We that right. Do. That's a great question. So in this case, we, we got trademarks. Yeah. Um, this is not patentable. I don't and think so. we yeah. didn't, right? It exists already. So there's not much we could do. We get, went, got trademarks. And the way you get protected is we went to, um, like, CLC is, is like the NFL properties of many of the colleges. Sure. Knew somebody there. Um, had them kind of walk us into a couple of places that they do business with who were reputable. And so we ended up licensing this to a company. They have the, we were going to do nothing really. It was going to be theirs and they would just pay us a royalty. So we would have no inventory risk, none of that. And we didn't have to go out and try and, and pay thousands and thousands of dollars and, and give guarantees to leagues that we didn't want to give. Right. And for this one, we did okay for a little bit. It was... It, but, but at the end of the day, it wasn't really the right um, licensee that we went with. So um, this one didn't really go as well as we thought. We but wanted it's also to make your first it one. First one. And we, we anticipated going a lot broader and not just having, we were going to be all sorts of good luck products for your favorite teams. Sure. That was the goal. And what we learned from, the, from CLC and NFL and other companies like that is it's very hard to get a license on this, and let's just say the next one is a t-shirt, and the next one is a, um, I don't know, a plastic thing. Well, they give licenses to specific companies for those specific categories. So for us to try and license to each indiv individual one was going to be difficult. Right. right. So it wasn't exactly the best one to start with, sure. but we did. Right. But it, 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 a lot of lessons learned there. Um, your next product I think is if I, if I'm correct, is it this product? I'm that's correct. So, this is the product where we really bond over. Yes. Um, at about the same time, we figured this out. Now, at about the same time, Howie and I invented or created or came up with the same product idea. Basically, his design was a little bit different than my design, but I have drawings and everything. And uh, Peter Poon and I came up with the idea of making a pillow we called the hand pillow. I actually came up with the idea. Peter liked it. He drew it up. I went to my dry cleaners who does all my tailoring and I asked them to make me a sample. They never could make it. They didn't understand what I wanted. A lot of people thought I was crazy. Other people thought it was a good idea. The idea was I was traveling a lot. I found that on planes, it's very uncomfortable. None of the pillows really worked for me, especially the neck pillows. I found that most people didn't think that the pillows worked for them, but they'd buy a lot of them trying to, this one's going to be the one, that one's going to be the one. And I decided that your hand was really the best way to sleep, whether you were against the window or you were in a middle seat or an aisle seat. But then, the, then your hand gets really uh, hard after a little while and starts to hurt your face and your head. And I thought, what if you had a pillow that could strap around your suitcase and then strap around your hand and you could use it with the straps, without the straps. Maybe even, I thought, use it in the hotel because I'm a germaphobe. I think that's a brilliant idea. I, I, it is a brilliant yes. idea, right? <laughs> um, and then I, you know... I meet you, you come into the office, we're talking about something completely different, and you say, by the way, I also invent products. I said, like what? And you said, I got this thing, it's called the on-hand pillow. I said, the on-hand pillow? 
You don't say. Don't go any further for a minute. <laughs> I, well, first of all, when I said, I, by the way, I had the same idea, what was going through your mind? Do you think I was full of it? Well, no, I didn't think you were full of it, but I will tell you, it happens a lot, like with other products. People, there is so much parallel development going on that you may be doing it, I, and I happen to run into a lot. It is crazy how many times, I'll tell you the stories another time, of other people doing it. But when you told it to me, it was one of the early ones that I've had with a product of mine that was actually on the market and you kind of showed me drawings. I'm yeah. like, I, I can't even believe it because it was pretty similar. And, and I was like, of all the gin joints, you walk right, into my, exactly. you know, like steal uh, an old yeah. line. Yeah. Uh, you <sighs> walk into my office to talk about something else. By the way, I invent products. Yeah, like what? Meanwhile, that's a hundred right. years ago already <laughs> for me. So I wind up, uh, I travel a lot as the terrifics know, and I wind up buying uh, the on hand pillow at an airport. I had seen it at an airport um, and taking a picture of it and sent it to a couple people to say, see, I told you this was a good idea. And everybody like laughed at me when I sent it. And uh, I was in such a rush that day, I didn't get a chance to buy it. I bought it and I gotta tell you something. I actually would never have gone with this design that you have, we're gonna explain it, um, as my design. My design was, it was different, I've showed it to you. Uh, however, I love this. I want more than Thank one. You. Uh, I think you've done a terrific job. I've told you the, the slight improvements I think you could make with it, um, but it is tremendous, and I've used it about four times already. The first thing is, what you did is you put a pocket in here so I can slip my hand into the pillow, um, and now it's the on-hand pillow, so I can rest on my hand. And I've you got- take the packaging off. Can I take the packaging sure. off? Great. So here we go. We've got a pillow with basically a, a pocket in it, okay? And I can take my hand and slide it into this pocket, and now I've got a, a pillow on my hand. Now I could do this side if I like this side. That's the side I like the to cool put against the window. The cool side and the warm side. Right, I like the warm side for some reason. I put, I put this against my head, I can do different positions. Now let's just say I'm, I'm working on the plane, which I, I've done this with this pillow, because I don't like the ones that go around your neck. I, I like this either. design. You can squish this up, put it behind your neck, and work or watch a movie, and you don't have to have your hand up. Right. It's just such a, a versatile pillow and such a tremendous thing. And again, because I'm a germaphobe and I sleep with my arm like this, I can walk into a hotel with my pillow, put my head on it, and uh, go to sleep without sleeping on their pillows. And then you've got this nifty little strap. I can strap it to my bag so I don't actually have to carry it. It's also great if you're sitting at your desk yeah. and you want something for lumbar. So yeah. it's, it really is. It's a regular pillow. It's, it's got you know, a lot of cushion to it. And you could just use it without your hand if you're on the plane against the window. Just put it up there. You can use your hand, you don't need to. There are very few products I get super excited about. And this is, a, a, honestly, like when you first, when I looked at it at the airport for a second and then when you first came in here, I was like, but that's not the design I would have gone with. But I bought it because I liked you and I wanted to support you and I still don't have the pillow that's the right pillow. And I figured, well, all right, let me give this guy a couple bucks. And I love it. I love it. I'm glad it. you love it. E3, I used it. I went to Vegas shortly after that for business meetings, used it there. Before E3, we went to Infocom, used it there, and I used it for one other trip I can't remember, and I absolutely adore the pillow. It's phenomenal, um, and, and I just, I can't commend you enough. How did you come up with this? So I came up with it because I was traveling a lot, and I was looking for kind of ideas. At the same time, I had a couple ideas for men's dress socks. I had a couple ideas for another product. And I was just looking for something cool. Well, let's talk about those later. Yeah. I want to hear about no, them. No, 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 but I'm saying we'll, like. We'll, let's make them. So, well, so, oh yeah, so, all right, let's so do it. So this one yeah. was, it's interesting. This is the way a lot of products come up. Not just sure. mine, but more, a lot, of, a lot of other inventors. I had, I was playing basketball, hurt my wrist, had to have wrist surgery. I'm in a cast, I'm traveling, and even sleeping at home. And as I'm falling asleep, I tend to sleep in my hand, especially on a plane, like this, like this. And I'm waking up, I, my face is all scratched. Right. So I take my sweatshirt, I put it on my cast, and I, I'm like, fall asleep and I wake up with no scratch on my face. I'm like, that's pretty comfortable. And I look around, I see other people sleeping on their hand. I said, you know what? What about a pillow for your hand? And that, that's really how I came up with the idea. And then I started asking friends because you always want to test sure. it out and see, am I crazy or is this something? So I said it to some of my friends. I'm like, what do you think? A pillow for your hand? They're like, that's not that stupid. And if my friends are saying it, that means it's brilliant. Right. Right? So, well, okay. So I, I actually, don't know about brilliant, but. like I came up with it kind of the same way with the sweatshirt idea because that's how I tested it. When I, once I came up with it, I went, well, let me try a sweatshirt. And I rolled a sweatshirt up into a ball and I, and I went like this and I went, that is brilliant. And I am telling you, the feedback I got was this is stupid. And except for Peter Poon. Peter thought it was great and did the drawings. And that's what I shared with you. And I even shared the original email so you could see the date. 
and it, but it's unbelievable. And I, I think you've done a great job. So Thank you, you, so you, I'm, I'm just going to look at the clock for a second. I know we got to take a break real quick. Sorry. I, no, we're I, good. Yeah. Um, I, but what I was going to say is, I am so impressed by this. So you take this product, you invent it. What happens? You come up with the idea, you get the sweatshirt, then you prototype it. Here's the prototype you made, which I think is great. I couldn't explain this to my dry cleaner to get them to well, make it. Mine was again a little bit different. Right. So I literally um, went to where did I go? Joanne's Fabrics okay. bought fabric. I went to Michael's craft store, whatever it is, and bought inserts for pillows. I showed him, I had a designer do a design of what I wanted it to look like. I brought it to my tailor. I said, can you make some of these? And he made me a bunch of them and it was way cheaper than those. <laughs> you know, at like literally like 20, well, $20, $25 a piece. Well, you started with Michael's. I mean, right, you, you exactly. bought the fabric, you didn't right, have to right, order right. it. Yeah. Um, but he made it and it's pretty close. So this is like a foam. Yeah. This is microbead, so it's a little bit different, but it's pretty close well, and it's to what concept. it became. It's, it's an idea but, and, and it's a good prototype, I would think. For sure. And then you, you made the, the packaging. I did packaging. I did. And, and again, this is where I probably spent more than I needed to. So I did a whole logo and a design. I paid, you know, I had to pay right. to have all of this done. I did the packaging and I ended up licensing it to a company that, again, ended up being the wrong company. Same company that did this ended up being the wrong company um, for a variety of reasons. And at some point when I realized they were the wrong company, I w found out who the leader in the neck pillow space was. You go to Hudson News, they're in every Hudson News. The name of the company is SNI, but the name of the brand is Clouds. If you go see their rack of pillow, neck pillows, the blankets, sure. the eye masks, the socks, it's Clouds. So I went to them, I showed it to them. They go, you know what? We see, I don't know, I get 10 products a week. I really like this. And with it, I kid you not, within, I would say it was within a month we had a deal, which wow. is really fast. Yeah. Faster than any deal I've done. And they've been great partners. Uh, that's why they, they got to market much faster than, I mean, the guy who, you know, kind of wasn't the right partner, took a year for him not to be the right partner. These guys got to market in under a year, selling them, doing great, Hudson News, and, uh, and it's been great and a great partnership. And they're great. I really enjoy doing, working with them. Yeah. And, and they do everything. Right. Right? Again, just, you just came up with the idea. And, and I license and it to them. Right. And you made the prototype and then you step out of the way. Um, I, I think it's very interesting. This is somewhat similar in, in design as far as packaging to what you originally created. Right. I bet, you know, you, you maybe you spent too much for the packaging here, but I think honestly that helps. It helps no show question. that you're serious, that you're real, that it, it brings a, a, you know, about the process. How married do you have to be to this? Like maybe you like the foam better than what they want to put in. And, and how do you know when to say, okay, you're right, or let's do it your way, especially when you really believe this is the right answer? Uh, I'll give you a great example. So the name I had was Pillow Hands yeah. with three Zs at the end of hand. I thought it, I thought it was really a good name, yeah. you know? And they said, hey, and I trademarked it, so I paid for that. Sure. And they said, we, we like the name Pillow Hands, but it doesn't work because you're in an airport, someone has to make a split second decision. We're, we like to go with on hand pillow because it's more obvious sure. as to what it is. And I had to, and they asked me what I thought, and I said, look, you guys are the experts. And, and I say that for most things with this. You know the business. If you're telling me that's the case, let's go with what you yeah. think. If I thought they were dead wrong, I would tell them. Um, and then the other thing, the only other thing I wanted to tell you is, you know, I then licensed it to another company to do, I just licensed to them to do generic, which yeah. is you know blue, blue pink, pink, red, whatever. That's what I was going to show you of other colors. Um, that, that now um, it's it's going into other stores like Walmart, Target, with a, another company that's doing entertainment licensed version wow. of this. Yeah, so very, very so that's cool. pretty exciting. Why, why don't we take a quick break? We're going to talk about this. We're going to talk about the new on hand pillow, right? Mm -hmm. um, that is is out, is coming out. It's coming about out. to be out. Yep. And that is also more closely to my original design. And I also love this product. And again, not because I also came up with it, but because it really is good. I'm not that kind of guy. And the most amazing part about it is most people in my situation would have been like, I hope it fails. I, I screw you. I'm the opposite. I want to see you do amazing with it. You already have, but I want to see you do more amazing. 
and uh, I think it's great. I was so happy for you. You were, and, it, and it's genuine. And yeah. I appreciate it. I can tell. And, and I'm like, it. and by the way, it only makes me feel like, wow, I really can come up with good ideas. So we'll talk about what I can do with these good ideas I have in a little bit. We'll talk about the new on hand pillow, uh, the second version, and uh, a lot more stuff when we come back. We'll take a quick break. You are the Terrifics. You make Be Terrific special. I got to say hello to Jenny, who's in our Slack chat, Digital Phil. The Extender, all of you guys, you're all amazing. And keep the feedback coming. At Be Terrific TV on all social media. Connect at BeTerrific.com if you want to join the Slack chat for real-time conversation with us, you, and the rest of the Terrifics. We'll be back right after this. Don't go anywhere. Kevin, take us away. Welcome back, Terrifics. I'm Michael Artsis. Thanks so much for joining us. You are the Terrifics. You make Be Terrific special. At Be Terrific TV on all social media. Join our Slack chat. Connect at BeTerrific.com. You can also send us feedback there. We'd love to have you, us, you, and the rest of the Terrifics 24-hour real-time conversation. Jenny from Finland is watching. Thank you so much, Jenny. What's up, Digital Phil? How you doing? The Extender. What's going on, my man? What are we extending today? Those arms for hold cameras, anything like that? The extender.com. I'll give them a plug because today's show is all about inventors. We've got a great inventor here, and he's a friend of mine. His name is Howie Bush, and howieinvent.com is the website. You can find out a whole lot more there, including reading his blog. This is one of your inventions. It's the second invention ever. This is the on-hand pillow, the second invention ever from you, not just in the history Correct. of the world. There, are, there were others. <laughs> <laughs> First there was stick, then there was on-hand pillow. <laughs> so uh, we've got the on-hand pillow, and I really love this product. Uh, I came up with a similar idea at about the same time. We didn't know each other then. You're in my office telling me you invent some stuff, Oh uh, yeah, like what? And you say, oh well, one of my products is the on hand pillow. Oh yeah, tell me about that, because let me tell you. And so I think this thing is is unbelievable, um, and I really love it. And this was not the design I would have come up with, but I really do love it, and I think it's multi purpose. And I, honestly, if you're traveling, you have to check this pillow out. The on hand pillow, it's uh, by Clouds, um, and and it's really your invention, but you license it out, and it's in Hudson News. By the way, if it's not on the shelf or you don't see it when you walk through the airport, you can just say, hey, do you have the on-hand pillow? Absolutely. And they'll pull it out of the back. That's what they did for me. I, you kind of tipped me off to that. Right. Um, and of course, it was on the rack. I just didn't look hard enough. <laughs> but they did say, oh, we might have some downstairs or in the back or right. whatever. So um, you've got a new on-hand pillow. Uh, and, and, and this is something that I'm excited about because this is very similar to my design, the design I had had, um, which I went as far as designing. Uh, we had a drawing. I went to the tailor and said, hey, could you make this? And they, <laughs> what? Could I make that? No. Uh, which makes no sense. I mean, here's a needle. Here's some thread. You know how to sew. Here's some fabric. You no, need a new I, tailor. I do need a new tailor. Go to Jose. I had a great Jose's Jose on Long yeah. Island. Yeah. Is that where? And when I was a kid, I used to have all my hockey equipment tailored. I'd bring them. I'd, I'd, yeah. You know you huh. have to wear the neck guard? I'd, I'd cut the word iTech out and, and pull out all the padding and tell them to sew the word iTech. The neck guard? Like, like the Dick Buckus? Almost. Thanks. It's a little different, yeah. All right. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> I had the sleeves cut off my, my undershirts, and then I had them hemmed so I wouldn't have stupid. It was stupid stuff. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah. But they were good. They could, have, they could have done this. <laughs> I know. I need to look good <laughs> under my equipment. Forget about what the equipment looks like right. or how I play. Let's look good under the equipment so when I take it off, I intimidate my own teammates. Uh, <laughs> my game was all about intimidation, by the way. Clearly. So this is the newest on-hand pillow, and, right. and so it's very similar in design or concept to what I designed um, in my drawings. I didn't ha you, you add a swivel here, which is nice, so you can put it in any direction. Um, I had a, a design similar to this with a strap that kind of Velcroed around that right. you could put on your suitcase, take off your suitcase, and then you could strap it to your you know, hand and, and do whatever. But I really like this design. Tell Thank me you. how you went from this to this. So the thought process was, you know, I, I, lo I love this pillow, yeah. but it's it's big, and right. so it takes up a lot of room. And it doesn't, though. The other pillows are much bigger. You've got the You're strap right, here. So you could yeah. strap it around. I, And it's great, so yeah. you can do that. What I love, I wanted to create something. Like I said, I sleep on my hand, right? So like this or like this, either one. Yeah. And 
what I found was my hands, not a, it's a pretty normal size hand. Yeah. It's about the size. That's all you need. Right. I don't need all of that for my hand. So I came up with something that saves even more space. I'm in the travel space already. What's going to be number two? Let's really save space. I mean, literally, this you can put in your briefcase, your backpack, or whatever. You can put it in your jacket pocket. I could, this one I could put in my in your back, back pocket. pocket. And I'm gonna I'm gonna check this simple. out for a second. You think I can fit it in my breast pocket? Yes. Here? So I'm getting on and off the plane. And I yeah, put it here. Simple. Yeah. Simple. I mean, I wouldn't walk around normally like no, this. But you but know, when you're in the airport and you got your tickets going here and the drink going there and right. the change going in the back pocket and your wa and I got to get my ID out and everything. You got everything going everywhere. Right. Yeah. And so this, Perfect. this, the swivel part of it yeah. is what I really like because, you know, just having it on here and then, you know, what are you doing with your hand? Sure. You can, if I want it that way, that way, I, I can do it this way. Now, I'm not going to put, put it, it to, my, to my head now because I'm wearing some makeup, but I did try it earlier and I really do like it. And, and what excites, excites me most about this is this is what is most similar to my original design. And uh, I think it's amazing. So when you have a product like this and it's a success and then you take it to, you know, clouds and you license it and then it becomes a success. And then you say, okay, I'm going to take it to some other licensing company and I'm going to put uh, entertainment characters on it because Clouds only has the normal license. I can now go and do other things with it, which is super cool. How do you say, oh, and let me do this? I mean, what makes you think about this instead of the next completely different product? Well, you know, I'm always, I, I have a sheet with, you know, or, or my phone with, you know, 100 products. Yeah. But, you know, when you already have a relationship with a company like you know, Clouds is, you know, it's really, the name of the company is S&I, their brand is Clouds sure. in Hudson News, and they're the only pillows in Hudson News. They may, they may distribute for other people, but they're the only ones allowed to put pillows in. And I said, all right, let me give them another product. Let me think of one that also works for them since I already had their ear, right? right? So it makes sense. I'm doing other products also, obviously, but let me see if, let's see if they like this. Okay. I came up with the idea and they loved it. It's actually due in, um, the first, you know, few thousand are due in to be going into Hudson News pretty and, you know, tested and put into Hudson News within the next month. Wow. So it's pretty exciting. Very, very cool. I, I like this a lot. Thank you. And in terms of entertainment license, you know, it's just how you structure your contract. Well, no, I mean, that's a great uh, thing. And we're going to get to that a little bit later. I, I, I do have a, a lot of questions uh, of, of advice because you, you seem to be ready and willing to give advice. Howweinvent.com, you're happy to help people. But, um, and we're going to talk more about that, but I was curious not, I mean, the license thing seems like a natural progression, right? This seems uh, uh, different, right? right? And so it's, it's interesting. I like this a lot. We've got some packaging as well uh, for this. Right, and it, blue and pink. And it's going to uh, swivel to your comfort, and this one says uh, it will include the world's smallest sleep mask. Right, which I don't have on yeah. these right now. So we're not going to open those up, right. but it's in it's in this one. Sure. So it literally is in the back of the pillow, fits in there like this, yeah. and it's got... How'd you think of that, though? You know, we wanted to put something in that added more value, yeah. so it's this plus. And and I when I we're talking about a sleep mask, you know, everybody has the earplugs, which I don't even use. I don't use a sleep mask typically right. either, but I thought, you know what? If it could be in here and not take up any more room, and we can call it the world's smallest sleep mask, you know what? It's a it's an added value. Can I show you what you could do with both, by the way? Sure. And and this is a can I give you a recommendation? I would love actually for this. Like, yeah. I, I've given it to you, I think already, but I'll just tell you. What do anyway. you got? So I think the only thing I had thought of when I was designing this ver whatever, I thought you need an elbow pad. I confirm right. that by because I I ride in the back of the plane, unlike you. <laughs> um, <laughs> Kevin and I ride in the back. All right. We ride with the the regular people. My my terrific. Me too. They me ride too. with me. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, uh, I, I know you do. Yeah, I, I know you're not like you know flying up front with uh, you know the milches of the world. Let's yes, say, right. Yes. But uh, anyway, so uh, you, I think you actually have a second product, a third product here that you don't even realize. So my idea was the the armrests are very hard. Sell this with an elbow pad, and I've kind of confirmed that by using it. That that's the only part I don't like about it. It's not that I don't like. I. I mm. So what about if you if you have uh, something like this? You already kind of have the shape. And uh, or you buy both of these, and when you have when you decide to take this one, now you have an elbow pad for your elbow. Not bad. Or we'll you sell under advisement. I yeah. like that. And my. All right, you're in. You're in. I'm in. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Always wanted to be in, Kevin. I'm in. You hear that? I'm in, Kevin. Uh, and and and. Don't say that again. That sounds weird. Yeah. 
That is weird. <laughs> uh, and my only other recommendation, just because I'm a germaphobe, is let's have a little carry sack for all this. Yes, for and, sure. And, and these are upsells. So I buy this. Am I right? I don't know. I'm asking you. Am I well, right you're right. upsell? You're right. But, but when I license my product they, to the manufacturer, they decide. They decide. Sure. So, I, yeah, sure. But I go to them and idea. say, hey, look, you could sell this by itself. You could sell this by itself. You could sell a version of them together with this as an... It's a great as idea. ...functions as an elbow pad. And then you could sell the sack additionally. That's a great idea. The right. only the, Part of the only problem is yeah. when, you, when you sell in airports, if you go into airports, which you travel a lot... Yeah you notice there's not a lot of space. Right. So they only have so much room I know. to get all their products All in. right, so this is on howweinvent.com, right? Yes, That's what we're going to have yes. to do. This will be the How We Invent one. Do yes. you sell on the site? Soon. Okay. It's so new. The blog is very new, yeah. to be honest with you. All right, I, I get it. So you, you invent this, it does very well. How well is very well? Like, what is very well? You don't have to give me a number, because I don't want to, that's, that's rude, right? 10 million, no. I, yeah, but I mean, like, how, I mean, does it sell? So, does so it sell a thousand units? So uh, this is 10, a new. 000? This is a you know a new product, yeah. right? It, it, I think it's been on the market for a year or so, and it okay. takes time. And they, you know, what they tell me is this product belongs in our product line, and it'll be in here for the next 20, 30 years. Really? I don't know what they say that. Well, they told me that. Yeah. I, don't I mean, know. that's kind of like wow. That's, that's a great. bold statement. That's great. Yeah. But well, it doesn't mean anything. I mean, but well, of course. But w what's it doing? I don't know. I mean, in terms of. So far, I, I think the first year, I think it was 25,000 pillows Wow, or something I mean, like no, that. that's impressive. Yeah. That's yeah. very it's impressive. Just, it's, just, it's not in everywhere yet, but it will be. The goal is many more right. than that. But, but, so that's, but it's on I the mean, way. To say that They're very the, happy. You said the first 4,000 or so are going? A few thousand. Few I don't thousand. know the exact number. Okay, but a few thousand. That's two, 3,000 pillows. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. As a, and you said that's a test. So that's great. I mean, this is... What I wanted to kind of say is, okay. sure. so then you, you do this and you have this other idea, and I don't know how you have this idea. I, I'm so curious. You come up with this idea for something called the wobbler, right? Yeah, the wall wobbler. The wall wobbler, and, and this is it. I'm not shaking the TV to shake the TV. This is Captain America. How cool is this thing, right? You put that on a door in your room, okay? I really could shake this TV a little here. Yeah, Let you me could give shake you a little it. love. But, yeah, it's like a bobblehead for your wall. That right. was the kind of thought process. So instead of having a flat, like, fat head or sticker that you put on your wall, you now have something super cool that kind of comes out from the 3D wall. 3D and three D shakes, yes. And, of course, you had to go and do it in Gronk. Yeah, huh? I didn't. That wasn't my choice. But you, I, you know Are you what? Sure? I, Are you sure I like Gronk. I like Gronk, actually. Yeah. I'm a Jets fan, and I like Gronk. So what right. does that tell you? You'd like to party he's, with Gronk. Yeah, maybe. he's fun. Look at him. Or Look how fun he is. is. Look at him. Look at him. How much fun is that? I mean, this is, he <laughs> might be the funnest guy in the NFL, yeah. right? Like, yeah, he's uh, definitely up there. I, I kind of just, you know. Yeah, I get But it. you know what? I'm a giant. You're a Jets fan. I root for the Jets, but I'm a Giants fan. Right. So, like, I mean, Gronk can't do anything to hurt me. I mean, two Super Bowls versus. That's true. That's true. You know. They, yeah, so you shouldn't mind him so much. No, no, I don't mind him. I, like I said, I like him. Yeah. You know, I think he's a fun guy to watch yeah. and a fun fun guy to hear about. So you've got the, the entertainment ones. It's like Marvel and superheroes and stuff, and, and it's a really nice design. And then you've got the Gronk. Uh, and I guess the, you'll have a sports line is what the Gronk is. Right. So, so this one was the one that... that you think I'd Gronk's ever seen that? No. Wouldn't it I'm be amazing sure. if like Gronk walked into a room, you had the whole wall done in Gronk's? That's pretty cool. Or yeah. if Gronk is watching right now. Well, he probably That is. would be cool. It, that would be cool. Well, let's, all right. Let's get Gronk on. All yeah. right, I got that. All right. You got, you got that? Yeah. We'll, get, right. we'll make that happen. So, so Gronk, yeah. uh, well, the sports one, I went to... A company. Well, but uh, how'd you come up with this first? How'd I come up with the idea? Yeah. So we were at a trade show um, with this product, actually, yeah. and you know, was a little frustrating because it wasn't. It wasn't doing the what company. You to. The company we discussed before, yeah. it wasn't just wasn't going right. Whatever, which is fine. Um, it happens. And I walked by another booth, and I thought I saw. It looked like almost like, and it wasn't this. But it looked like almost like, you know, when you see like a deer head or, or a bear head or sure. whatever on a big thing. And I said, you know what? That would be really cool to have in a sports, whether it's a face or a helmet or, sure. a, or a mascot, right? And, and I said, okay, but then what else could it do? Like, you know, from a retail perspective, sure. as, you, as you think about it, if it's a big thing, you're not going to sell it because they're not going to find floor space for it. So we said, let's do a smaller one and let's have it wobble, like almost like a bobblehead. Sure. But that's... Horizontal instead of vertical. And then you get the idea and you're like, I got to prototype it, right? A and that's a good idea. And you don't want to spend like $500 per prototype to be like, is this work? Does anybody care? Yes. And you, you, 
you basically take these uh, teddy bears and you cut off their heads. Yeah, it's a little this was it's a, a little cruel and unusual. It is. What did you do with the bodies? Uh, you know, I don't have know where that body yet? is. I don't know where that body is. <laughs> but this one we didn't have to really do much to. Right. It was oh, because it's right. It's just got it's the just it's that all, guy. Right. It's that guy. His right. legs are right here. This yeah. is like a dog toy, I think. Yeah, it might something be something like that. Yeah, five below. That's right. Oh know, yeah, that's okay. where we got. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Cheaper cheaper than the five thousand or whatever. No, a couple of thousand. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's five thousand for ten of them, five hundred right. each. Okay, right. I got it. Good, uh, good math. Yeah, thank you. I, I didn't have to get the abacus out, but later I will need fingers and abacus when we start getting into bigger numbers. Got it. Uh, so you build something on your wall, like what do you do? A coat hook or something to kind of demonstrate this? It was basically like a hanger, like like a uh, picture hanger. Sure. Like a hook. Sure. That we put to, on the to wall. Hang this. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and did you have the backboard for it or anything? I didn't have the backboard. We okay. just wanted to see what it would look like on the wall. On the wall. And, I'll, I'll, and I have some pictures. I, I'll right, show you, so you cut a hole in the back to hang it. So we just literally made a hole in the back yeah. and hung it. And it actually looked, and it, so it wasn't wobbling, but it still looked cool. And you liked it? I liked it. So you're like, I'm going to move forward with this. And then what happened to this? these two prototypes that... Where, right. I mean, you're going to shop around now to show, like, this is what I want to do, and what do you think? Well, of I it? had a couple other prototypes, but these were now, you know, it was kind of done being shopped a little bit. Yeah. But we had them, they were sitting around my house, and my friend was over, and his daughter was over. I think she was, I don't know, 10, 11 years old. And uh, she was downstairs for a while, and she comes up. I actually wasn't even there, but she said to my wife, she goes, Oh, Lisa, I saw these were, um, they had holes in the back of them, so I sewed them up for you. So, <laughs> so this is like a not so much girl. a prototype anymore. I mean, she was doing yeah. a nice thing. Yeah, she was yeah, trying yeah. to do a nice thing. But then again, you could just rip you the whole back in. But, but, but it, it was pretty, pretty funny. It was pretty fun. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, did you ever think about doing this as a plush, or you just thought yes. you did? That was so. The first thought was really plush and or um, like foam. You yeah. know, the EVA foam, and you know, like that kind. But this of, is like serious. This is really nice. Well, this is like pressed wood in yeah. the back. So, so let me tell you this. So this one is the sports one, which I started with, and I did a deal with a, with a company that's a very successful sports man, sports license manufacturing company, and and we tried the um, plush. It didn't look it didn't look as good for yeah. whatever reason. So they did this. They have a Odell Beckham one that looks kind of fun. There's number one fingers. There's helmets. So you're not actually even calling him and saying, hey, Gronk, we got to get you in here for a photograph. He's just getting a licensing fee through the NFL, through the NFLPA. It kind of just trickles down to Gronk. Yes. And uh, find some stock photo of him. Uh, whatever they did. I don't the NFL, even know, but yeah. yes, I assume. And, uh, and that's it. Or right. pull it off TMZ. This looks like he just had a night of party. Exactly. So, so I licensed <laughs> this to them. Yeah. And then, and, and it's about to come out. I think they said October that okay. it's going to hit stores like Walmart, Fanatics, Are you going to do like signings with them, like to promote it? Are you going to have like Gronk I don't know. do a signing? I don't know. Because, yeah. you know, oh, once again, I license, license it, it it's somebody and else's, so yeah. it's kind of out of my, you know, ballpark. But what I did do is I just licensed them the sports version. You're so smart with that. <laughs> I never would have thought of that. I would have said, oh, you want the pillow? You, you could have, the pillow's yours, just pay me a royalty. I'm, I will be honest with you, it's been a big um, godsend that I did that because then you have more bites at the apple for getting royalties from more di from different people. Well, and look, let's just say this didn't, it's working out, but let's say it didn't work out. You'd be locked into this deal with them. For the next 30 years, they're going to sell your pillow as opposed to, oh, it's not working out with you? Well, I'll make this the blue polka dot pillow right. and I'll go sell it myself or I'll put, you know, Marvin the Martian on here. Right. Well, then, you know, be the space jam. Well, you always have... Pillow. I mean, just in terms of inventing and stuff, yeah. you always want to have a strong licensing agreement and make sure that if they're if they're not doing much with it, that you get the rights back. Right. I mean, that's actually really important. I mean, but these are good things to learn. So I wouldn't. I, look, I think I'm pretty savvy when it comes to agreements and stuff. Pretty savvy, and I wouldn't have thought of that. Right. Yeah. Well, you could ask Kevin. Kevin, am I good? <laughs> <laughs> He's nodding. It's the attorney in me. No. It's the attorney in me yeah. that 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 thinks like that. But but you know I've also been around the sports business enough to know. And and you use some of the things you learned with your things that don't go well. Right. For the things that can go well. So so this. So they can use the foxtail for anything forever. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You're very clever. So so anyway. So this this one is hitting stores soon. This but they one, can't use the dog tail. So we this just one. change it to the dog tail mm -hmm. and then. <laughs> You should keep that for good luck. Are you a San Francisco Giant fan? I, uh, well, no. Syracuse? I'm a Mets fan. Are you a Syracuse fan? Uh, uh, Syracuse. I there like I like the orange. I've always liked the orange. There you go. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do that. Yes. So this Thank one you. is is a different company yeah. because they have the entertainment licenses and and that's not approved yet. 
So this is kind of like a sneak preview. Uh -oh. So that's pretty cool. But I love what they did. They with did it. an amazing it's, job. It's really cool. And, and approved we'll by, by who? You or by Marvel? So it's approved by me. Right. Um, they like it. The company, the manufacturer. They're ready to go. They now need to go. Actually, um, I think Marvel may have even approved it. I'm not a hundred percent, but so, some of the companies are starting to approve it, and now they go to the stores to see. Right. If they have an interest. There's a lot of layers here. There's a lot it's of amazing. layers. So yeah. even when you say, like, the company says, yes, we want to do it, it might not get on the shelves. Even if they could manufacture it next week, it might not get on the shelves for, and, and manufacturing takes a while, but it might not get on the shelves for a long time. Right. And uh, especially with licensing. Licensing has a lot more layers than, which is a generic. Right. Licensing is, is much it tougher. It seems like there's a lot of potential frustrations for you. For sure. Yeah. And, and especially like, I want to get this going. I want dollars running, rolling in the door. How hard is it to be an inventor and do this kind of thing while having a job and doing other things? Um, and, and how much money do you, again, like, I think the one thing that holds inventors back, certainly with me, when I came up with the hand pillow idea, it was like, well, Let's say I could get a prototype. Where am I getting it manufactured? I never thought of the licensing thing. And then if I had, it would have been like, who has time to go take these meetings and make these deals and all that right. stuff? Right. You know, people find time. Yeah. And, and that's, that's the thing. And some people don't. And those people don't get those people done. interview people like, right. how are you? <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know what? At the end of the day, people, yeah. it depends how much you want it. It depends. Right. You know, some people let things stop them for whatever reason, sure. whether it's financial, whether it's they just don't feel that, they have the resources to do it, not just financial, but time or energy or yeah. what have you. And if it's something you really love, and, and a lot of people don't know, people are finding out more about licensing, you know, because that doesn't take, it takes time. Right, but it's not as much. And it's not all, as you all encompassing. Right. right, and you're not manufacturing. Like for me to manufacture in China and bring over containers and hold inventory. And, and then you gotta worry risk. about customs and taxes and duties and fees and, and shipping. Risk. And, and what if they don't yeah. sell? So right. let the people who are the experts, that's why what I why I license. Right. So I let the experts Well and they all know, that stuff. like you said, you trust them. This this was a different kind of material inside. You let them say this is the right material, this is what's gonna sell, this is what people want. They figure out the price point. They figure out if it makes sense. They might say, Howie, we'd love this idea. We can't get it at the price point that's gonna sell, so let's not Absolutely. do it. And do you have like final approval? Can they can can they come to you and say we're doing this? And you say, you know what, I really don't like that handle on top. Uh, I'd rather you not put a strap there, and 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 pull the deal back. Or they, once you say here's the here's the deal, here's the pillow, it's yours. You know, it's theirs. There's a clause in there that basically say, in my contract at yeah. least that basically says it has to be of the level of their products. Sure. So they can't come in with like a really cra you know right. bad product. Um, so. I don't have approval because right. I'm, I'm giving them the rights to do it, but it's in there that it has to be, you know, certain of, level. of their level. And then do you have, um, with this, right, do you have like, uh, is there something where you can say like, oh, you know what, my buddy just came up with the greatest idea and go to them and say it? I mean, obviously you could just say it, but I mean, is there something where you really suggest things all the time? In terms of protection? Like, am I worried about them stealing no, it? No, 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 no. I, I, I mean, like, if, if you ha if they, they make this and then they start making it and you go, hey, it's on the shelves now, it's doing pretty well, and I thought maybe we should make a pink color and they don't have a pink color, do you feel like you can go to them yes. and, and, and say that all the time? There, so that... every, every relationship is different. Right, of course. So, so every licensee I have different relationships with. And, and these guys, they're open to any, you well, know, any suggestion they... I have, any thoughts I have, any new products I have. They're, they're great. And we kind of talked about it before, but how do you protect yourself when you walk in with something like this? So this was trademarked, it was not trademarked, it was trademarked, but no patents. Correct, because that's really not patentable. Patent? I did, and so I got a design patent on this, and I filed what's called a provisional patent. <laughs> I, what's, what's called a provisional patent yeah. I filed. You know, you want to give yourself protect, as much protection as you can when you go in. So you si have them sign an NDA. Yeah you know, non-disclosure sure. agreement, if you can. Not everybody will sign it, but most people will. Right. Um, so that gives you a certain level of protection. And then, when you have something that is patentable, Patent potentially it. patentable, right, that it, that it can be patented, you file what's called a PPA, which gives you a year. It's, it's only $65 to file. Okay. It gives you a year to decide if you want to file a full patent. Sure. So you can shop it. It gives you that year to shop it and, and see if you want to make it into a real patent. And then if, if it's not patentable or, or if you don't want to patent it, you can also trademark it. Then there are some other things. And, and, and you have to also try to work with people you trust. Exactly. And I always try and go in warm rather than cold. Sometimes you do go in cold, meaning right. you don't know anybody and you just pick up a phone or send an email. Um, but 
you know, I'm, I've been fortunate where I haven't had people take advantage of me like that and, and try and steal it. And by the way, for the, per, for the percentage they're going to pay you, it's really not even worth it for them in today's day and age with social media to have the black eye and right. people saying bad things. The PR damage to them is probably worth less than what, you know, the fee that they're going to be paying. Right, you. absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, and you'd make a lot of noise for sure. Uh, so I want to talk about this quickly before we, we're going to take a break and, and talk about a whole lot more. But this is the ugly Christmas blanket. That is the ugly Christmas blanket. I just had blanket. an idea. Should I say it? I don't know. If to, well, I, whisper it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the ugly Christmas blanket. Right. This is really cool. Uh, ugly Christmas sweaters were really popular last year for the NFL uh, as holiday gifts. The ugly, uh, the ugly Christmas uh, blanket was also a really popular thing. It's available at Amazon. You created this. How did you come up with this one? I mean, and it's the funny thing to me is like, I would have thought you would have stayed with sports starting with this. And, and, and like you said, you had ideas for other like fan things. And then the next product is this, completely different. Then the next product is that, completely different. And now we're here. I, I mean, you know, if you had made this uh, a Steelers towel, I would have, a, a blanket, I would have said, okay, I get the correlation. Right. But how do you come up with that? Well, to be honest with you, the company that I licensed this to at first is largely a blanket company. Right. So as I'm there doing stuff with them, I'm thinking, they have all these blankets, why not an ugly Christmas blanket? Because I know ugly Christmas sweaters are so big. And like you said, especially with sports, the company I did my licensing deal with for the wall wobbler, yeah. for the sports wall wobbler, they, they sold, and it's, it's public information, so I'm not divulging anything, like $10 million worth of team licensed ugly Christmas sweaters. Wow. $10 million worth. Wow. And and by the way, that's not even in mass retail. That's just like in specialty stores sure. and online. Unbelievable. It's a big number. So you come up with this. Right. And you make it. And, and I imagine it's pretty easy. This is a blanket. It's not that hard to right. make. Uh, you got to come up with some ugly patterns. How do you do that? Are you, you hire designer, people? Are no, you? I'm not. You no, know, you hire people. I, I, by the how way. How do you know if it's ugly I'm, enough? And I'm really not handy. I, I, can't, I'm, I can't do any of this. I have to hire people. By the way, I'm, I'm the same way. Yeah. Uh, how do you know if it's, uh, it's like you asked me if I built that computer before and yeah. I said I supervised? Right, 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 right. <laughs> no, but you know what? You have to get the right people who know how to do it. I yeah. mean, that's what you do. I mean, but if, I mean, how so do you if know, I could do it, anybody could do it. But when you look it. at it, how do you know if it's ugly enough and then you don't want to make it too ugly that nobody buys it? Right. So I don't know. It's a fine line. Yeah. You have to kind of just see, you know, just you know it when you see it. Um, I feel like we should be skiing with that around our waist, which brings me to my next idea oh. for you. How about the how about the ugly Christmas towel? You could do your whole bathroom in ugly Christmas towels for your guests so I that they it. leave quickly. I love it. And you could also use them, like I said, to ski. You could wrap it around your waist and ski with it. Yeah, I don't know about the whole skiing thing, yeah, but yeah. but I like the I like the towel idea. And I will tell you. So talking about being able to protect, you know, your stuff and and being nervous that someone's going to steal it or whatever. Um, this is not patentable, obviously. It's a, it's a blanket. What, what am I doing that's so unique? So when you don't you're, get a utility patent when you're, <laughs> when, Right. So when you're inventing, you have to, um, and you're going to license things out in particular, you, you try and do things that give it perceived ownership. So I do really good sell sheets so that it looks professional. Sure. In this case, I got this trademarked. I was able to trademark the name Ugly Christmas Blankets. Wow. So if anybody wanted to use that, they had to come to me. Right. So then did I also go, do Xmas too? Like, is that? You, you know, it's funny. I, I have the um, website, the domain for it. Yeah. I don't know, um, trademark wise, if I do. Do it, Terrence. I do. do I, it, have it. It. I have it. I have it. <laughs> it's right here. Uh, uh, Kevin just let me know in my ear that uh, Janny from Finland has a question. He wanted to know what you think is the coolest product you've ever seen that's like an invention. You know, not like something that a major company put out, but some kind of invention that you've you've been like. That's wow. a great question. I, you know, I guess I would say, and and I don't know that it's even actually uh, been produced correctly yet, but I I don't know if you're a Kickstarter fan, but they had this thing called the coolest cooler. Yes. Have you seen oh, that? Oh, it's it's got lots of problems. I know all about it. It's got lots of problems, but Plagued they sold. By delays. I think they sold ten million dollars worth of this cooler. Yes. And it's got a blender capability. It's got, you know, you can charge your phone and you can... It can do everything. It's got a radio built in and a this and awesome. a that. Yeah, yeah. But 
You, you think know, that's you the coolest one? That's pretty well, cool. Well, it's one that just came to the top of my right. head. I'll, I could give you some others. I mean, I, listen, cool. I'll give you I'll give you one. It's not the greatest invention ever, but it's really cool. So there's a guy. I do some, I think I told you, I do some, uh, I coach other inventors. And there's this other coach that I know uh, who is also an inventor. And he came up with a product, and it's such a crazy story. You should actually have him on here. He's a cop out in, I think, L.A. or San Diego. And he came up with this product. It's called the Wolf Washer. Have you heard of it? No. Okay, so it's now everywhere. But he couldn't sell this thing for anything. He designed it when he was in fourth grade. It's basically like a hula hoop, uh -huh. and water shoots out from the middle, and you kind of just like wave it over your dog. Your dog steps in through it, whatever. Wow. And, but he couldn't get anybody. He wanted to license it, and he couldn't get anybody to license it, and it took him a while, a while. He found a guy, and, and if I, Ryan, if I'm butchering this story, I apologize, but I think I have it pretty down. So uh, he had this company who was interested, but it was an as seen on TV company, but a small one. They didn't know what they were going to do with it. And he end, they end up, they were putting it on Facebook just for the night as a placeholder. They put this video up. Oh, my God. No sound on the video. Must have done amazing. Hold on. No sound on it. Yeah. So it's just like a minute of him waving this By the way, thing that's over how the door. Every one of the terrifics watches this show. So <laughs> you're in trouble. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I'm better with no sound. No, but it's good. They just but, say, oh, the on but, but hold on. This guy, they, he woke up. And there were a million views. Wow. It wasn't even live yet. Like the, the Facebook page wasn't pushed out to anybody. Sure. It wasn't really live. It was just a placeholder. A million views. It now has, I think, I spoke to him a couple weeks ago. I think it had 68 million views. And now it's with one of the biggest as seen on TV companies. And it's being sold kind of everywhere. Wow. And, Is that uh, All-Star Marketing? I don't know if it's with All-Star. I think he's with one of the others, All I right. think. Sure. Excellent. But I do All love All-Star. Right. Speaking of uh, coaching people with inventions, I, that's what I want to talk about when we come back. So we're going to take a quick break. He's Howie Bush. I'm Michael Artis. You're the Terrifics. We'll be back with a whole lot more right after this on the Michael Artis Show on Be Terrific. Don't go anywhere. Stay with us. Welcome back, Terrifics. This is the Michael Artsis Show, and you are the Terrifics. I'm Michael Artsis. You make Be Terrific special. Thank you so much for watching. We're having a lot of fun today. At Be Terrific TV on all social media. Connect at BeTerrific.com to join our Slack chat, to give us great feedback. We'd love it. Keep it coming. Check out all our new 360 videos on our YouTube page and on our site, BeTerrific.com, and of course, YouTube.com slash TV. We are updating our site. We've got like almost everything that we've ever done on our site. In the next two weeks, we'll have it all up. That's thanks to Kevin, Kevin Foley. Kevin is uh, across the glass. And I don't think we have the Kevin cam today, but I think we have the microphone. Kevin, are you there? Yes, I am. What's up, Kevin? How you doing? I'm doing great. You enjoying the show? I'm loving the show. What do you like most about the show? Um, all the cool inventions, and yeah. um, I think that you and Howie are doing great. You guys great. have a great chemistry. Thank you. You got a question for Howie? Uh, wow. Definitely. Like... Uh, what was his uh, What was his favorite invention? Oh, why well, we asked that? Were you paying attention to the show? <laughs> yes, I was. But like, I guess. Uh, <laughs> you mean the, the, his favorite invention that he's made? Yes, the favorite invention. He, he backpedaled there. I saved him. Do you see how I did that? It's a good save. It was uh, a good save. So this is Axel Foley, basically. Yeah. I mean, he's Kevin Foley, but Axel, do you think he knows who Axel Foley is? How old is he? How old is Kevin? Thirty-one. I'm going to say he has to know. I'm going to say he knows. Yeah? Do you know? Yes, I do. Wow. He knows? Who, wait, hold on. He says he knows. Who yes. is Axel Foley? Beverly Google. Cop, Eddie Murphy. Wow. He got it. I he knew it. it. Yes. I knew it. Do you remember, do you remember the, like, the best scene of that movie is when he takes the bananas and puts them up the tailpipe? So the, uh... the best scene is when Damon Wayans walks over and gives him the banana to put in the tailpipe. That's a young Damon Wayans. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I forgot about that there part. There you go. I was so fixated on the <laughs> wow Beverly Hills Cop. That was like '83, I think '81, something somewhere like that. somewhere in there. Yeah, it might be '83. I love that car too. I'm saying, yeah, '82, '83. The was Detroit that. Lions uh, varsity jacket. Yeah, that, thing was amazing. yeah, that was we're, hot. We're gonna have to look that up, Kevin. Look that up when you get a chance and let us know. All right. So the the question is, of all the things you've invented, what is your favorite? You know, or is it yet to come? Well. No, it's hard to answer that. It's like if you have more than one kid, like which is your favorite kid? Like you love them all differently? Come on. It's, it's not, true. I, I could tell you what's my favorite interview. You can't tell me who... Well, you have one kid, so that doesn't work. I have a favorite kid, yes. 
<laughs> His name's Jack. I mean, they each yeah. have, I kid you not, like, I love them each in such a different way. Like, like I, lo- I don't know. I love them. Uh, uh, there's, so there's not it's one not, favorite. It's no. You stumped him, no, Kevin. No, we'll see at stumped the end. the inventor. We'll see at the end of the day when when the money is. You is know. there anything that you like? First of all, this is Howie Bush, HowieInvent.com. Uh, he's an inventor and how he's an, we invent. You get it? How we invent? Yeah, I you do get, get it. it. Yeah, and 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 uh, I love it, and I love the logo. I love that icon. Thanks. It's like you're a superhero inventor. Yes. With a shaved needs. head. Yes. Are there any other him. superheroes with shaved heads? There's, sh- there's got to be. Well, like Lex Luthor, but he's not a superhero. He's an anti-superhero. No, he's a bad guy. Yeah. No, we sh- But we kind of with the cap that. on, Batman would have a shaved head. Like, if you look at it, you know, he's just got the ears. Yeah. Captain America kind of has the shaved head look going. No, I think there's got to be. A thing, Terry maybe. Crews. Terry Crews. Terry Crews? He's like a superhero to me. Look at the size what, of that what, guy. What about the Fantastic Four? I don't, I don't That's know. That's the thing, the thing, the guy, Michael Chiklis. I don't know. Yeah, I, don't know. I know Michael Chiklis, yes, yeah, I yeah, know yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. So you, you look a little like Michael Chiklis. Thank you. Finally, somebody didn't <laughs> say I look like Howie Mandel. <laughs> oh, I get that all day long. I start signing autographs. I want to cash a check. They're going to start saying you look like Howie Invent. There you go. I got no problem Just with that. You're a that handsome out. guy. Just grow that I gotta, out. I got to get the handlebars. <laughs> then I can go, let me tell you something, brother. <laughs> exactly. I feel like my voice should be huskier with yeah. this thing. Really? Don't you think? Work on that. I'm going to work Get a on Harley. It. Yeah. When did you do this? This is this. I don't is know. I just get bored, so sure. I just start doing. Stuff. I used to do that. Back it's like in high inventing. School. I invent different <laughs> facial things. All right. So <laughs> here's the thing with, it, with with your inventions. You, you got some really great inventions, but do you ever have ones that aren't good, and that you know aren't good, and that you don't? You just go, oh well, I got to this point prototype wise. I will it. tell you. Yes, but initially, like I think they're great, and some I haven't been able to sell that I still think should be made, but what, I, listen, I don't decide. I go to the people that make the decisions and they either like it or they don't. CJ is watching in Texas. And he, What's up, CJ? What, CJ is the man. He's, he's an IT expert, did you know that? I did not. Yeah, he's awesome. CJ watches like every episode twice. Wow. So I'll get more questions that I'll have to like email you and we'll tweet about oh, it. Oh, fair enough. Yeah, from right, cool. CJ, he's awesome. And he's watching in Texas and he actually wanted to know what is one that you haven't gotten sold yet that you would tell us about or licensed? Okay, that's a good question. I guess I would say, oh, well, you know, we'll go back to travel. Yeah. I came up with what I thought was a great problem solution, which is, a, you know, one of the ways, like, we invent. Even though a lot of mine aren't necessarily problem solution, that's kind of the way a lot of inventions sure. are done. Like, they, someone sees a problem, and then they come up with a solution, like, like I did with this. Um, you ever sit... You're on the airplane and you're kind of doing the elbow battle with the yeah. person next to you. Oh, yeah. I had that recently. It's annoying, right? Yeah. And, and then they get you know up the and pro- you try and claim it. You know what the problem was? Is that recently, this is a true story. I'm on a plane. I, got, I hope they're all true I stories. I got the window seat and I got this old big guy next to me sweating all over me. So now I'm like arm wrestling with him. And I always dress like this on a plane. But for whatever reason that day, I said, I'm going to go this way with a T-shirt underneath instead of a dress shirt. And then I take the sports coat off and put it in the thing because it's Vegas and it's 100 degrees and I got this guy next to me. And I'm about to say something. I look over, he's got a hat on, you know, World War II, United States. I said, hey, did you serve? He goes, yes. I go, thank you very much. The whole flight, I'm like, oh, my God, stop sweating all over But me. he served. He served. What am I going to so do? God bless him. That's God right. Him. I said, you made sure I could put my head on the pillow at night. I am certainly on not going to complain about your, um, on the hand pillow, on the on hand pillow. On this plane on the on hand pillow, I'm certainly not going to complain about your sweaty arms, sir. Right. So back to the battle. Yeah. I came up with the idea. That was a long way to get back that to the That was a battle. long way. But I, I came up with this idea to, to, for something that goes on the um, armrest yeah. that with a line down the middle that gives you, so it extends a little bit over on each side, not sure. much. And it gives you each your own kind of area. Right. I like that idea. Nobody's taken to it. It's not that nobody has. I went to my guys, yeah. my clouds. You know, clouds, S and I, and they just didn't. They didn't love it. They said, "How do you put that down next to somebody and you say this is my fifty percent? That's your 50%. Well, it's kind of like doing everybody a favor. It's like why you would have the to airlines ask. hand would, them out. I agree, but but you would have to ask, and it's a good conversation starter. Would you ever? But, by the way, talk to the people next to you on the plane. You can meet some really. You can make yeah, great I, connections. You can meet some cool people. You can even hook up. It's like the original Tinder. Exactly. Yeah. I know some guys who have tried tindering on the plane. 
That's interesting. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. it doesn't work out for them so well. <laughs> you can find guys on the plane a lot easier than you can find girls. It's interesting. Well, Okay. Yeah. I don't know. Whatever floats your boat. No, not for me. I yeah. just, That's fine. Know. But anyway, no judgment, I'm not on yeah. Tinder at all. No judgment. Anyway, so the, the armrest thing, though, I think you, could you sell it to the airlines? Would you ever think about doing that? So I guess you could. They're not in the, they're not in the business of buying stuff. They're in the business of trying to find stuff that they can make money on sure. or, or have somebody else do. And, and the thought process, by the way, the negative that they said was, how many people, how, how many things can people carry? Carry, A, right. that was one. And two, um, we think ask, like people aren't going to want to ask the person next to them if they could do that. Sure. And I think it's a benefit to both people. Listen, they know the business better than I do, but that's one of them that I, th I thought was a no-brainer. Oh, I came up with it. I'm like, oh my God, I would I'm just, brilliant. You could just write you and me on, the other, on one side, you on one side, me on the I other. Like you don't even have to have a conversation. You just slap it down. And or you put a like something like that. License it to Delta. Put a Delta logo on it or different airlines. So you, people buy whatever airline they're flying. Then you sell them one for every airline. How about this? They put it down. The guy's gonna think, oh, the airline must have put this here. Huh. But uh, the you and me, I like. I like the you yeah, and me. Yeah, yeah. Smart. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. All right, you're in Our, again. <laughs> yes. Yes, <laughs> Kevin, I did it. I'm I'm putting you in all the ones that aren't working. There you go. Well, wait a sec. The other one was working. Oh, I the just elbow added pad. something. Was yeah. the elbow pad? The elbow pad. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, all right, so Digital Phil is also in Texas, and he wanted to know if there's a product that you have that you're going to start, or in the future, if you're going to start selling products yourself, not only on your site, but if you're going to like take some of these and not license them. Right, okay, so that's a great question. Digital Phil? Digital Phil, yeah. Great question, Digital Phil. So um, When he's not chasing his chickens, he's watching the show. Got it. Yeah. So in part, some of the, one of these, there's one, which I don't want to talk about yet, I'm going to be licensing. Yeah. But I'm going to keep rights to um, I call what we call venture, do ourselves, uh, and sell into other other areas. Um, so so that's one we're doing. And then I'm looking to do a Kickstarter. And I, I don't want to talk about what the product is yet, but uh, something I'm really excited about. I think it's really cool, pretty revolutionary, and it's not patentable and. So that's why I'm not really talking about it. Sure. We're working on trying to figure out if there's a way to make it patentable. But I am. I, we're going to be doing the Kickstarter in the next month or so, month, Fair month enough. and a half. Well, you're going to have to let us know. Of course. Absolutely. And so that would be on your own. And you're kickstarting it as a way to get into the manufacturing and all that, the things that somebody like Cloud's SNI would do normally. Right. So what, what, the reason I do that, for, first of all, part of my blog, the whole How We Invent thing, yeah. uh, the reason... What I'm doing, what's different from what everybody else does, is they tend to tell you what to do. All the invention, you know, places, you know, they say do this or we'll help you sell it or whatever. I, what I want to do is try and show people what I do with my inventions, which is, I guess, it's a little counterintuitive. You know, why would I show people when, you know, maybe they could steal the idea or whatever. I believe you guys are all good people. You're not going to well, steal my idea. It's not the terrifics, um, but the thing is also if you're I, showing them and they steal it, you've already proven that you were first, like that you had it. Sort of. I mean, I don't. You know, I don't know. What, you know, do you want to go to court to and deal with that? Yeah, yeah. But, you'd have but, to prove that they were watching the episode. But the bottom line is, yeah. I want to pull the curtain back on what is actually being done to that's show bold. it rather than tell it. But that's you're kind of. So this is about the coaching stuff, and you're kind of doing that. Right. Um, so you're kind. Okay. So now you've become successful at inventing. I still am not 100% clear. Like you, you, you built a business, you sold a business, you, or you, were a law, you became a lawyer, you built a business, you sold a business, you got involved in the World Series of Poker, and you did very well with that. And then uh, you said, you know what, I, I want to invent, and I really want to. Your wife must have thought you were nuts. Well, well, first of all, it wasn't like I said, I want to invent. It wasn't yeah. quite like that. It was more of, it just kind of happened naturally. Sure. And a, a friend of mine and I were talking about the first one, and we came up with the idea, and we said, let's pursue it. And I wasn't just doing that. You know, I was right, doing some doing of my other thing. things, and I still do uh, contracts for other people and things like that as a lawyer. If you put a squeaker in here, it'd be a great dog toy, Great too. dog toy. The I think they kind of dog could eat it. the foxtail. Yeah. There yeah, you not go. bad. That's lucky. Yeah. Not that so. is lucky. Yeah. All right. So uh, so you get into it, and when you when you say, honey, I or kids, I've got the on-hand pillow, they don't say, dad, that's nuts, or how are you going to bring this to market? Go back to, uh, you know, distributing television. They loved, my kids love, love my stuff. Yeah. 
they, they're like, that's genius. That's brilliant. I'm like, you guys are easy. Do they like, use it? I wish. Yeah, of course. Wow, that's pretty cool. Um, all right, so uh, then you decide, you're, you're successful at this, and you decide, I want to give back, which is I like, and I know that about you. You want to give back, and, and we're very much the same way. We're all about paying it forward. We do the Infocom show where all we do is teach people right. how to do what we're doing. Man, maybe I pulled the curtain back too far, and, I, and I'm going to have all this competition right. now. We're going to have, no, we could have the terrific army. We could have all these little satellite right. terrifics broadcasting live. All right, we're going to show them everything. Kevin, get the Kevin camera back up. All right, so uh, you say, I want to coach, and you start coaching people, and now that's really what you're doing with your blog is you're letting people know what you're doing, how you're doing it, and you're also then coaching people, and you're really coaching them, like on the phone, on the computer, FaceTime, giving them advice. Are you taking a cut of each one of these things? Or are you no. just doing this out of the kindness no, of your no, heart? No, 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 no. Well, so let's back up a second. Yeah. So so I I have my blog and yeah. I'm doing all my stuff, my inventing, and I'm showing and I'm trying to teach people. And um, you know, there is coaching going on and yeah. I am available to coach. Uh, typically, listen, if, if someone comes to me with an idea and they say, hey, do you want to partner on this? I might do it. Sure. More often than not, I'll try and just help them by putting them in touch with the right people and things like that. And in, in those cases, I'm not taking a cut or anything like that. And there are people I'm coaching and literally getting you know paid by the hour to coach people. And, and I'm also involved with a company uh, who I actually took the, the course of this uh, it's called InventRight is the name of the company. And, and Stephen Key was the, I read his book. After I had licensed a couple of my products, I read this, it's actually a crazy story. I read this guy's book and it was about licensing. And I read the book and I loved it. I thought it was a great book. And he's a really good guy and a very smart guy. And I wrote him an email. His email is in the book. And I just wrote him an email saying, you know, I just want to tell you, I really enjoyed your book. Thanks for writing it. I unwittingly, I, I just licensed a couple of products unwittingly using your kind of method of doing it, of licensing it, you know, so I just wanted to tell you about it and say thanks. An hour later, my phone rings and it's him. Wow. Yeah, because my phone number was on the email and, you know, in my signature and he, we had a great conversation and I ended up kind of going through the invent right way and, and working with him. So now I'm involved with InventRight also. Very nice. And kind of doing coaching with them and, and I have uh, many students It's so with them. important though, I think, that people know that that exists and can find out because, again, I had an idea very similar to this and I had no idea what to do. Right. And if I had known you and you didn't have this idea, I could have said, hey, Howie, coach me. Well, first of all, do you think that I got any legs here? And you would say, well, from my experience, based on this, you might have something. Let's talk to the right people. And you would coach me through the process. It's genius. I'm serious. So we've got to talk about this idea I have for men's dress socks right. right after this. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but I'm serious, though. I mean, that is, that is, and so what, how do people just go to howweinvent.com and they can find out more. They can read the blog. They can, they can find out a lot of these stories that we've talked about here today, too. Right, right. Yeah. And, and if they sign up to, to get the blog sent to them, which they should, they'll also get, um, like, I have a download for them to give you kind of the steps of, of inventing to license. Very cool. And and I'll show you know it shows it actually has it's actually kind of cool it has a couple of my sell sheets in there the sell sheets are what what I use to send to a potential licensee to see if sure. they like the product it has that in that download I like that you're kind of giving everybody the tools you're really pulling the curtain back right and you're not afraid I like that I'm the same way I'm like you know what this is how we do it you want to do it go ahead well, I want you know what? I want to help you the more the merrier yeah. and if more companies want you know want Did people more help products you it's great along the way. Yeah, well, certainly Stephen Key is yeah. one of them. Um, and yeah, throughout my life, of course, there's always people. And so that's for me, too. Like, I didn't just show up here and build a studio. Right. I, I had people who helped me along the way. And if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be here. And I'm, I always look to pay it forward. Right, absolutely. Howweinvent.com. Howweinvent.com. You get it? It's like how right, we invent. Right, it's H-O-W-I-E. Right, how we invent. You know why? You know why I came up with Because people always said to me, as a joke, you know, when I was younger, how we doing? Yeah. Or how right. are you? That's such an awful joke. Right? So, yeah. So, it became how we invent. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's a funny thing. But it's such a terrible joke. Terrible. It, yeah. I, I met but some, I've heard it a lot. So. I met somebody on a project a couple of weeks ago named Desiree. And I said, does everybody walk up to you and go, you got to be bad, you got to be bold, you got to be stronger? She was like, my whole life. That's the Desiree uh, song from the 90s. That oh. Was yeah. 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 And believe it or not, everybody walks You're up there and says You're a true renaissance man. Am I? I guess. I guess. You I seem don't know. to have knowledge about a lot of different things. Thank you. I, I, I take that as a huge compliment. You should. I, I really, yeah. yeah. 
you know, I'm about the height of Danny DeVito. I could, <laughs> I could play the part in the remake. Uh, Kevin, any more questions from uh, our wonderful viewers, the Terrifics, or from you over in uh, maybe the extender in San Diego, California? California. I always do that when I talk about you the Do a little exam. Arnold? Yes. I want you to know I really like this pillow. Isn't it puny? This is perfect. <laughs> and do you, you know, there's that one scene in Pumping Iron I just can't get over. I recently watched Pumping Iron I again. I have seen that in forever. And I'm like, how did this guy get elected governor? It's about how he's talking about how he has, you know, how, how the gym makes him feel. Oh, yes. 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 Uh, yeah. And I'm like, how was this guy ever elected governor? If I did a radio show, well, listen, I would everybody, play that soundbite all day back then. Long. Go back then. You know, every we've all done said stuff. Done right, stuff. of course. Yeah. Yes, I want you to know. Come with me. Come with me if you want to live. Uh, yes, Kevin. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be a little, self, little selfish here. He's going to be a little selfish. I ask he wants to ask you a question. Who, Kevin? Kevin. I should have given you a headset. Yeah, I can't hear him. I know. It's, I'm going to translate. All right. Well, the you question is, um, earlier, yes. how we Kevin. mentioned how people allow things, whether it be um, time or energy or whatever the case may be, hold them back from pursuing things. Um, is that something that you're born with or is that something that you develop over experience and time? Wow. That's a, that's a good question. He said that you mentioned earlier that um, people limit themselves because of time or they feel they're inferior. They don't, you know, they just don't go 100 percent in. They dip a toe in or they go hey, you know, I got this idea, and they let things get in the way. Is that something you're born with, the instinct to, to, to just push on and persevere, or is it something that's kind of learned? I can answer that, too, I think, a little, but I think I, not can. from the inventing standpoint. But I, I, I would say from, I think it's like anything. I think certain people are more prone to give up easier, and certain people are more prone to fight through things. But from an inventing standpoint, you can certainly fight through it. And that's why, to be honest with you, coaching is, is really valuable. I look at it like when I'm coaching somebody, yeah. it's almost like a trainer at the gym, right? So if personally, when I go to the gym, if I don't have my trainer, I tend to slack off. When I have my trainer, meaning like I'll go you months at a time. You might even take a day off. I, no, well, I, I, I'll go months at a time if, I, if I'm like, let's say I don't want to do, go training anywhere. I'll say I just need to clear my head. I'll say I'll just do it at home. I don't. Right. When I have the accountability of my trainer, I do. And it's the same thing with inventing because you have somebody who's done it already who can teach you the steps, and when you have that self-doubt, can push you a little bit. Well, and can also tell you where you are. Sure. And, and so I think it's really, really important um, and to have somebody kind of even as a, as a soundboard. But I will tell you, I think it's a combination. I agree. I think you have, you have to be born with this innate ability to keep your legs moving, to never stop, right? On the other hand, I really think it's what you're made up of. In life, no matter what you're doing or what you're talking about, people will tell you, no, you're not good enough, it's not gonna work, all this stuff. Certain people will push through and will fight, whether, whether it's right or wrong, as long as they believe in it, they'll keep pursuing it. And they'll succeed because of that. And other people will go, oh, that guy's right, I'll fold. And they let people tell them it's not right. And I've seen it time and time again, I had this business series for The Daily, and I realized that you, some of these people that I followed who had amazing success stories, literally it didn't matter what the product was, right. they could have literally sold. They went door, they started, they all start out like door to door selling, here, I'd like you to buy this, well, or I'd like you to stock this in your like store. Like Mark Cuban always talks about. Right, and when you get no, you could then go, oh, well, that guy didn't want it, and fold up and walk away. But these people, it didn't matter what they were selling, they could have sold anything, and they never took no, they just moved on to the next guy. And that's what inspired, helped inspire me for Be Terrific, and made me realize, what am I waiting for? And also is what you need to have. You need to pursue, and you need to keep going. And I think that it's, it's great advice to never say no. If you really believe in something, if you're committed and passionate enough about it, and, and would be terrific. I mean, I've done many things where I never stop pursuing. It's kind of my makeup. But I don't know that I would have ever start it if I didn't experience how these entrepreneurs were selling. Because here, I have to sell the ads. And that's right. the one thing I don't want to do. Right. But, so. I, but I'll tell you, and I, I, I yeah. think I've said this to you in the past. I, I'm a big believer, and I didn't used to be. Yeah. I, I can get myself stuck on trying to get my sell sheet or get my product or prototype perfect. And I think perfect is a big problem. And like, I'm a big fan of action over perfection. Well, and so I know I learned that in the news world, right? And so I actually feel like I'm past that. You know, I'm not the, I used to be, and I'd like everything to be perfect, but I feel that something is better than nothing. Right, and, and moving forward right. is better than 
standing still and waiting for that person to get you the thing that you're waiting for, keep moving forward. Right. I give it a time limit. Like, I'm willing to wait for you until I decide I'm not willing to wait anymore. And I don't even need to pick up the phone and say, I can't wait for you anymore. I've already moved on. Right. So that's, I think that's very important. But, but you know, I want to say one thing. You, you would add, I guess, back to the question a little bit. It's kind of interesting. You know, whether you have it in you or you don't have it in you, I will tell you, my, the students that I do have, yeah. they range from literally having almost like no money and no resources and no connections and nothing, and to I have you know, some students who are you know, multimillionaires who sure. have sold a bunch of businesses, and they're relying on me to kind of help pull them through. So yes, the ones who kind of have that drive, it's a little easier you know, you give them direction and they go. Some of them, you have to pull them a little more, but even if they don't have it in them innately, you can get them there. Do, do the millionaires, do the people who are wealthier usually have less drive and determination? Are they less hungry? No, I, not I at all. I think so. They're, they're almost more hungry sometimes. Yeah, I mean, every, you, every situation is different. Do you I ever worry about uh, giving them the wrong <laughs> advice, especially when they're, you know, there's so much on the line? No, because, I mean, I, I guess I would say my answer, my reason I'm saying no is because I'm teaching them more about a process sure. than anything. So when they say to me in my first conversation with any student I have, I say, look, it doesn't matter. I may love your product, I may hate your product, it doesn't matter. Right. Because what I think means nothing. I don't even, I may know your industry, I may not know your industry. If I know it, I may have a better you know, insight into it, say it's not a good product for that industry because of this or that. But typically speaking, I say to them, it doesn't matter because I have my own product, some that I've loved, one I even told you about, that I thought should be on store shelves and isn't. So what do I know? Like I'm, I'm right, sometimes I'm wrong sometimes, just like most people are. So I'm not saying, I could be wrong if I said, you have the greatest product in the world and then no one buys it, then I'm worried about being wrong. Sure. But if I'm teaching them the process of how to license a product and the steps that they need to go through, like doing your market research, you know, doing a patent search, and you could do this all yourself and doing it very inexpensively, sure. and I'm teaching them those steps, and they're gonna get the at-bats with the companies, meaning, meaning be heard by the potential companies to license to based on what I'm teaching them, that's all, that's all I'm promising, that's all I can offer them. It's really, really awesome, and, and it's great advice, and I think that in coaching, you, it's good to have a coach for a lot of different reasons, but even for the fact that if you might, if you're coaching them and they get stuck, you might even have a connection. It might not be a no connection question. to license their product, but it might be a connection to get them to the next step or a person to talk to for, oh, well, you need to talk to this guy because he can do drawings for you or whatever. So, yep. HowieInvent.com, Howie oh, Bush. The, thank you. Way, um, we had Mike, a lot of fun. That was oh, great. Kevin, thank you. We got a, li a little, the peanut gallery's got one more question. What do you got, Kev? He said one more question last time. You know, that's a reporter's <laughs> trick. Do you know that? Um, yes. I'm going to teach question. you. This is what you do to ease somebody in at the end of an interview. You say, or if they're struggling a little, you go, I got one more question for you. They relax. And then you can ask them four more questions. That's what my trainer does to me, yeah. too. Yeah. He's so like, just one, one more. more. And I'll do it. And he'll be like, one more. I'm like, oh, all right, Kevin, what do you got for us? All right. Actually, this is um, the answer to your question earlier about the Beverly Hills Cop. Um, he's, he's got an answer for us to the oh, Beverly I, Hills Cop oh, thing. Oh, yes. he does. What year? 1984. 1984. Yes. So on the Price is Right, I win because I was at the under well, at 83. I said 83, 84. Yeah. I think you said 82, 83. I'm just saying. I, I think if we get the tape, I said I said like 83, then 81, then 83. Yeah. I stuck with 83. 83. Yeah. All right. Thank Fair you. Fair enough. Yes. Good answer. Very Good nice. Answer. That was great. Thanks, man. Dun, 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 Thank dun, you very dun, much. Dun. Thank you. Howie Bush, everyone. He's going to be uh, in more often. He's going to tell us about his Kickstarter coming up soon. And, of course, you've got to check out his blog, HowieInvent.com. HowieInvent. It's spelled HowieInvent. Like Ask his me name. anything. I'm always yeah. happy to answer any questions. Awesome. Email me, whatever. And, and, of course, check out these wonderful products uh, at retailers. The uh, Christmas blanket, the ugliest Christmas blanket ever is on Amazon. You've got uh, these, uh, uh, the smallest, world's, world's smallest, smallest travel, travel pillows, pillow. which is also an on-hand pillow, uh, will be available in Hudson News in, in the next month or so. And of course, uh, these are on sale now. These are the original on-hand pillow uh, from Clouds at Hudson News. You'll see uh, some new versions of them through another licensing deal very soon at uh, other stores with uh, characters on and stuff like that. Uh, these things uh, are available. That's a relic. That's a relic. Who wants it? You know what? Let's see. Do we want to give one Let's away see to the we have. we have a Steelers. Who's a Steelers fan? A oh, San Francisco I, you know Giant what? fan. I, you know who I bet is a Steelers fan? Pittsburgh Dan. 
I, I Pittsburgh Dan. Who's that? <laughs> I don't know. We've got Brianna Lachlan, who is a two-time silver medal winning USA hockey player. Yeah, from Pittsburgh. Goalie. She lives in Pittsburgh. And Done. We're supposed to go out there eventually, and she's going to teach me. She's going to coach me how to play goalie. Oh, awesome. Yeah, because I've already taken her on on the ice and scored. Wow, yeah. look at you. So so maybe I can give this to her. So look, we have a San Francisco Giants, a and Syracuse Orange. Well, no, I thought you gave me this one. Now that's you yours, right, right. right. So that's fair, is, yeah. that's yours. These aren't spoken for. All right, so we're oh, going to give away. San Francisco, oddly. There, there you go. So the Giants, I know who wants this. They do. Kurt Rogers. He's a, a friend, a, a big fan of the show, and the inventor and, and, and founder of Think Tank Photo. They make bags. And uh, he lives in the San Francisco Bay Area. He covered the 49ers for Sold. the uh, San Francisco uh, Tribune or whatever it is. Chronicle. Chronicle. Thank you. Uh, San Francisco Chronicle. His wife's a Pulitzer Prize winning photographer, shoots for Sports Illustrated and all sorts of other stuff as well. And he, uh, ask he covered her if she Joe knows Montana. My ask, her, ask her if she knows my friend Todd. Okay. So he might want this. He's going to have to enter to win. We'll do a contest for this for the Terrifics. Love it. And I'm sure some other Terrifics will want it. And then San Francisco Giants. And she shoots uh, the exclusive stories on Tim Linth Lincecum for the uh, for Sports Illustrated. Very cool. Pretty cool, right? Awesome. So, but we'll, we'll, we'll see if uh, my buddy Kurt wins this or if one of the other Terrifics wins it. It's all going to be fair and square. We'll figure out a contest for it. Anyway, all this stuff. And the Wobbler, uh, the Wobbler soon. They'll be available soon. We'll keep people posted on these. Yeah, yeah. The sports ones will be soon. And I'll keep you posted on this one also. Yeah, this is awesome. They're, they're awesome. Howie, you. I had a lot of fun. Thanks, I hope buddy. you did too. Kevin, he's across the glass. He's awesome. We'll get the Good Kevin job, Cam. Kev. Thank you. We'll get the Kevin Cam set back up. You are the Terrifics. You're the best. You are the reason we do this. You make Be Terrific special. We'll be back with a whole lot more next time. Until then, I'm Michael Artsis. Thanks so much for watching. Be terrific.